Hey, what's going on guys? Go Megagins here. Last video, uh, I've highlighted some uh, new improvements I've made to my JavaScript chess engine called Ukun that actually resulted for about uh, 150 elo point growth uh, in plane strength. And uh, the reason for obtaining this result was the matter of using the automated evaluation tuning. And this is the exact topic regarding this video. So, uh, there is a well-known method called Texel's tuning, so uh, it's designed by Peter Osterlund, the author of uh, Chess Engine Texel. Also, he, you might know him for creating an Android app called Droidfish. So if you're an, an Android phone user, you probably know that app, and Peter is the author. So uh, the very detailed explanation of the original method is available on the chess program in Wikipedia. But uh, the problem with this uh, page is that, you know, like uh, for noobs like me, it's kind of complete rocket science. And, you know, like uh, I was trying, I was trying to reread re this article n numerous number of times and didn't really uh, manage to capture the, uh, to get the, the, the very gist of what's, what, what's going on basically under the hood. Uh, but surprisingly, uh, later, well, actually, uh, I found another, uh, another very interesting explanation and much more uh, simple, much more, sh much shorter explanation by Andrew Grant, uh, the author of Chess Engine Ethereal. And Andrew spent really lots of time uh, researching the automated evaluation tuning and he's a real guru in this uh, sort of a topic basically and I just want to read uh, some notes from his article and again like all the links to all the resources I'm using here uh, would be available in the description below the video so now uh, I'll try to provide my very basic Kumaki Kins noobs understanding of what the automated tuning is and why this is applicable and how it works and then uh, I will try to live translate uh, this Russian article by uh, the author of Chess Engine Greco, Vladimir Medvedev. And Vladimir used uh, some sort of a variation of the original Texel's tuning, which works uh, almost as nice as the original method, but much faster. It, it needs uh, less data set and well, for me personally, that's the benefit. Well, anyway, uh, let's start from uh, trying to understand what the Texel student method is, and then we'll go step by step. So, uh, a quote by Andrew Grant, the author of Ethereal Chess Engine. So, Peter's original method took a sample of 64,000 games played between various versions of his engine. So, that's the very first initial step. You need to obtain a data set where you have 64,000 games played. That's clear. He extracted each position from each game and filtered out of those uh, with a reported main score. So uh, the idea is to have is to convert PGN file to the set of FEN strings. So uh, say like white make move. Let's say just just to give you an idea. So so this is the initial PGN. Well, th this is this is just a random PGN. But let's say we have initial PGN. Then move is made. PGN changed, and response pgn change every time uh, uh sorry fen change fen change so uh fen is the string representation of uh, position it looks like this and we need to take the pgn file that is literally the list of moves and we need to transfer to, to, to transform uh that file into the list of positions so eventually it would be many 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 positions that looks like this, like one, then another, 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 another. And they all are about to be extracted from, from the games based. Okay, so that's that's the the gist essence behind this. So uh, whatever game, and uh, again, like we have the scores for, for every single position, we have the score. This is this is important. And he said like to exclude the mating scores. So let's say if this like mating two, mating one, it's not returned by the evaluation function, it's returned by the search instead. So we don't really want to use those positions because we won't be able to calculate the error uh, of those positions from the probability perspective. That's just, that's different stuff. So we need to, ex to use only those uh, positions where the score uh, looks like uh, a decimal number, like representing uh, the 
relative uh, score of how one side is better than another in so-called centipons. So centipons is, is the measure to calculate the, how, how one uh, side is better than the other in, when it comes to the evolution functions uh, of the chess engines. So like 100 is worth of one point usually, like 35 is like a like part slightly less than a half of uh, of a centi of a pawn and so on. so this is this this is known as 35 centi pawn uh okay so let's move further on and he defined the following sigmoids aimed at mapping an engine's evaluation to zero one where zero indicates win for black uh 0.5 indicates draw and 1.0 indicates a win for white. So this is the uh, this is the statement that took me I don't know half a year to understand basically for about I don't know it's it was very tricky to understand. But now uh, I can actually explain finally what does this mean. So uh, we there can well I'm sorry for non technical terms but this is Koban Kikin okay this is the Koban Kikin's channel so the explanation is respective. So uh we have the met like mathematical representation or the numeric representation for our evaluation and this is kind of like mm, this is just numeric uh but also we can have a probability representation so uh, from the probability rep uh, representation perspective we can say like how likely the current site is about to win to lose or to make a draw so the idea is to convert this numeric value to the probability like value and uh, the mathematical method uh, behind this is the sigmoid function. Well, uh, I, I'm going completely insane when, when I say graph and graph, graphs and formulas, but unfortunately, this is something we really need to deal with when it comes to this uh, machine learning related stuff. So the idea is to transform. Uh, that just me explain as Kovac again understand this. So we have this value, and we need to say whether this is a win. And in this case, we, we, we can say that score is equal to 1. Or whether this is a draw, and in this case, we can say the score is equal to 0 0.5. Or whether this is the loss, and in that case, we can say that score is equal to 0. So only three values, like, uh, and that's why he called it like mapping the scores to this probability values like win, draw, or loss. So let's move further on. Uh, Okay, and it indicate a win for white. So this is the formula. So uh, uh, seems like no, it's not. It's not logistic regression. Nope. Okay, it doesn't matter. So uh, this is the formula that I was opening. That okay, forget that. So this is the formula how to transform uh, this uh, score to one or. Uh, 0 0.5 or 0 so the, the kind of probability winning probability here e is an evaluation so uh, evaluation means this value so how likely the current move scores okay uh, k is the coefficient uh, computed to minimize the error function it's complete rocking science to me but anyways very important stuff and this is the fixed constant that you well andrew is so smart that he can calculate this on his own well but uh, noobs like me just trying to grab this constant uh, available uh, let's say vladimir medvedev uses the constant like the constant of 150 which is uh one point and a half a method of computing k will be described later and if you just have a look at this uh, at this formula it's like oh my god you see like yeah i better don't watch this I better don't read that it's a bit of a rocket science so let's get back to Texel's tuning and peter used a white relative uh white relative quiescent search score in his error function not the actual evaluation in order to minimize the error of tactical position so this is very very uh, th this is the very essential part uh, that needs some extra explanations so there are two types of positions in chess so so-called compositions and so-called uh, like uh, positions that are causing some forcing sequences. So if we have a capture uh, available in the position, say here, in order to evaluate this sort of a position, uh, well, it could have uh, caused the recapture back. And in that case, 
the fact that we're capturing a pawn doesn't uh, essentially mean that we're better because let's say we capture uh, a pawn by the knight and then the knight gets, recap gets recaptured by the pawn and eventually we are knight down so it's really not that great so and if we just use the bare evaluation uh, the, the bare static evaluation without regards to the question search which actually helps us to uh, walk through the forcing line until the composition is reached and then get the uh, and get, then get the static score so in the original method uh, Peter Osterlund was using question search in, in order to obtain the score uh, assuming the question search not just the bare static evaluation so uh, and this is the core difference between the Vladimir's method and Peter's method. So Vladimir was using the static evaluation and in order to get rid of the, of the disaster related to tactics, he was just excluding those positions th that are tactical. So uh, uh, whatever position where we had some forcing moves are about to be excluded. So we are only uh, to be using, uh, so for, learn for learning purposes in Vladimir's method, we're only about to be using uh, compositions uh, where we can apply the static evaluation directly without any need of using the question search and uh, the reason behind uh, doing this is to uh, speed up uh, the learning pro process really significantly because question search really takes time and it's in order to make in order to run a session of Texel student it needs at very least six hours well uh, well I didn't yet test how long does it take with the Vladimir's method but it's it should be much much less uh, uh, amount of time because we just call the static evaluation we're not searching anything so it should be much faster okay so let's move further on uh just just need to make sure that my mic is is okay because uh i was re recording the video and yeah hopefully oh okay yeah hopefully and i, I forgot to turn on my mic and yeah m my wife is gonna kill me one day because I'm re-recording one video for numerous, uh, like a uh, numerous number of times. Okay, so uh, so he defined the error function as follows, and the explanation so R refers to the end result of the position. Uh, Q refers to the evaluation of the position after the question search applied. This I'm just adding this for myself. Peter would loop over the set of evaluation weights. So uh, core uh, core essence. Uh, the core part so uh, the set of evaluation weights in this case it means that the set of those parameters that are about to be tuned using this evaluation uh, using this Texel tuning so most likely these are like uh, bonuses and penalties say for point structure for mobility for kin safety etc for middle game for end game uh, for, for other for, for different game phases so the set of weights is uh, those parameters were about to be tuning and then we need to slightly adjust those parameters so that's the very uh, that's the idea so first we uh, uh, we just uh, convert uh, we convert the score Let's, let me just make another move to get yeah to get some uh, numeric value so we need to convert the score to uh, probability value so 1 uh, 0 or uh, 0 0.5 that indicates the draw and then we need to compare that value with the actual outcome of the game so let's say this position says like it's lost right uh, but eventually white actually won so this means that we have an error so it's gonna not lost it's actually won and in order to get deal with that error properly I'm sorry this is a, a bit of a rocket science to me to explain how exactly this happens well this happens within using this sort of a formula so the idea is that if we have uh, the more the greater error we have uh, regarding the prediction and again like the prediction is from let's say uh, the probability of winning is predicted to be like 0 0.88 okay and uh, the actual probability is actually like 0 0.99 and like 0 0.99 minus 0 0.888 would actually be uh, the error of how how wrong uh, our prediction was. Well, I, I'm sorry if I did some horrible error in this explanation, but that is at least like how Comac can understand this stuff at the moment. So don't judge it, don't judge it too much. That's that's how I understand it. Like conceptually, may, maybe not regarding to this formula, but at least conceptually. So we have some. Uh, so we're working with a uh, not with the numeric values, but with the probability values 
from 0 to 1 where 0 is total lose and 1 is total win and how likely the score translated to probability uh, would correlate with the actual outcome of the game that's uh, so the, the more error the less likely it correlates the uh, less error the more likely it correlates so I hope it's clear so the our goal is as soon as we calculate this error we need to make sure that we uh, minimize this error and that's the entire idea behind the tuning so we want to minimize that error and in order to minimize that error we need to adjust those parameters we're about to tune oh my god I said this I can't believe it okay so let's move on he would then recompute an error using the original value of k so of this constant and if a new set of weights produced a lower error the result was saved this approach is extremely naive yet still effective peter reported nearly 100 100 lo over uh, the course of seven tuning sessions so that's the actual uh test by peter uh, original test by peter okay guys so uh this is the core gist of the texels tuning so we just taken the value uh, the numeric value we convert in this to the probability value I'm very sorry if I'm saying some weird nonsense from the technical or mathematical perspective because I really suck in math and in machine le learning in general so just just don't judge it too much and when we do when we did convert that value uh, we're comparing that value with the real outcome of the game and uh, the difference of how the actual outcome of the game is different from uh, the predicted value is the error then we try to minimize that error by simply uh, adjusting those parameters we're currently tuning and those parameters obviously are the part of the entire evaluation so that's how we can make all the numerous uh, all the numerous uh, parameters of the evaluation uh, like get together to interact to each other to make sure that they kind of properly uh, interact with each other so uh, they rely on each other that, that that's kind of it so that was the original method and now we're coming to uh, this article by uh, Vladimir Medvedev the author of Greco chess engine and the slightly altered uh, version of the Texel student method so uh, just uh, just to to get the just essence of the difference so instead of using the question search he would be using the static evaluation just to speed up the process and all the details i will now try to read so the article starts with some sort of probably like an, an, an advertisement uh so he was he's referencing one of his previous articles it's, it's not to the, it's, it's not on the topic then he uh, it was uh, written into 2015 when uh, google has released their alpha go uh uh, the deep neural networks uh, uh, go game player and when AlphaGo actually defeated Lee Sedul the Korean uh, grandmaster in go if I'm not sure uh, if I'm not mistaken uh, but then he says like we're not gonna be obviously doing any uh, neural networks here so he says like he's sorry for that and also he was mentioned in the GRF chess engine by Matthew Lai that uh, later uh, actually st uh, started working for Google DeepMind and was n now he's a part of uh, uh, this Al Alpha Zero and uh, the newest version the Mu Zero apparently I yeah, hope he's still working there maybe not not sure but anyway uh, so it's just a big intro we're not nothing technical nothing interesting and here is the algorithm itself so he again he apologizes uh, he apologizes that there won't be any deep neural networks uh, uh, no automated uh, uh, recognition of keep uh, of key uh, things in the, within the position no Monte Carlo tree search etc uh, and this this would be uh, uh, regarding the very simple ev uh, evaluation uh, tuning uh, which uh, he references the uh, old Soviet uh, chess engine called Kaisa here uh, so let's go so the basic method uh, was chosen okay hold on a sec let me read this first uh, so so he used the Peter Osterlund's uh, Texel tuning method as the basic method for tuning his chess engine Greco so uh, I don't really want to make this uh, word, word, by, by word translation I just just want to translate the very gist uh, and according to the author of this method so here are the uh, benefits of using the Texel tuning uh, the Texel tuning method so uh, you can optimize 
uh, several hundreds of parameters of the evaluation uh, function at the same time, so simultaneously, literally. Uh, another another benefit uh, you don't need to know uh, you don't need to have the source of the external knowledge. Uh, so it's well in English it would be say no need for supervised uh, uh, learning, so no need for supervisor. Some uh, so so no need to use some uh, training data set with a good position so he explains here so uh, no need for external knowledge in the form of uh, uh, some uh, kind of like ex expert uh, evaluations of the positions uh, and yeah so it, well just just to explain this simply in English uh, like uh, when it comes to neural networks like efficient lab datable neural networks uh, let's say in stockfish uh, they use supervised learning from time to time. I was reading this some words so that they were using like uh, they need the weighted positions. Like mm, it's, a, it's the, the idea that it was using some external knowledge, some external data, ex externally labeled data, and uh, uh, the matter of being labeled labeled is just a matter of the uh, particular positions being labeled like. Uh, more accurately compared to the current program that is now learning. Well, okay, just forget that. So, uh, the, oh, the only thing that we need is only uh, the PGNs and the results of the game. So, literally, uh, the data that can be produced by the self-play. So, that's the second benefit of Texel Student. So, you only need the data uh, that can be produced uh, by the self-play. So, literally, you play 64,000 games store them to PGN file, and you already got the data for uh, uh, tuning your evaluation, that's it. And uh, correct work with uh, strongly correlated, uh, oh my god, how to translate this to English? Uh, 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 okay, let me just try to translate this in general, uh, because uh, it's not because I can translate to English because <laughs> I can hardly understand what they mean in Russian, despite the fact it's my native language. So, uh, it's the general machine learning related stuff. So, uh, usually in machine learning, in order to work with the data set, in order to predict something, you need to normalize the data set and uh, spend lots of time and effort and computing power in order to prepare the data set. So, the data set would be uh, would fit the particular uh, machine learning algorithms you're about to apply to this data set. While with Texel Student, you don't really need all of that stuff. You can use just the bare FEN string and you can just uh, evaluate it and that's it. So no need to uh, spend extra time and effort in processing power to uh, somehow normalize uh, the input data, so just the barrel list of like mil mil 1 million, like 3 million FEN strings, and that's it. So no need to normalize the data uh, like that, like we usually, like people, like machine, like data scientists usually do when it comes to machine learning. And now he says, so uh, here is the uh, vector of parameter of the evaluation function. And again, like, you know, guys, when I see this complicated math formulas, I say, like, why the heck do you, 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 you making people to people like me nervous because you know like it's the very simple thing is explained in such a damn smart way so the idea is so by this vector of parameterized uh, uh, no uh, vector of parameters of the evaluation fact function is literally the list of parameters you're about to tune so this is simply the list I hate when, when they call it a, a vector, probably that, that's it from the technical perspective, but for me personally, I'm sorry for this personal opinion, nobody probably cares about it, but again, like, because of this sort of things, I could have get into Texel Student for such a long time, that's why it makes me so, so depressed and nervous. Okay, so for every position, uh, from the test number of position, where uh, we need to calculate the static evaluation. And this is the core difference compared to the original Texel student uh, method. So if, you have a, if, if we have a look at, uh, at the definition, so Andrew, where, where he does this, uh, quiescence, quiescence. Yeah, Peter used a white relative quiescence search score in his error function. So 
the original method was using the quiescent search score. While here, the interesting thing, uh, the core difference is that Vladimir is, uh, Vladimir is using the static, uh, the static uh, evaluation uh, instead of the quest and search. So literally, he doesn't run. So if we have a look at the source code, just just let me just show you the source code. So if we have a look at the evaluation uh, function here. So this is the evaluate the, the function that is called by the quest and search, right? When it, when the quest and calculates the force in line, let's say, and then he just returns the score. So it's much faster to call the uh, to call this evaluate straight ahead than calling the quest. And so if we have a look at the quiescence itself then you see like it would be it might take ages to complete well obviously not ages but it, it takes it takes long because uh there may be really a lot, lot, little bit big branching factor before some uh, lucky bit cutoff occurs eventually so uh this is the core difference between vladimir's and peter's approaches so he's instead of using the quest and search he uses this uh statical evaluation directly straight ahead and he says like, oh my god, I hate this mathematical term, so he's, he says this, that it, it is some sort of uh, scalar, uh, oh my god, I don't know how to, how to translate this, this is the scalar uh, value, yeah, this is the scalar, scalar value. Uh, traditionally, uh, evaluation, uh, okay, hold on a sec, okay, so uh, here, he, here he explains, uh, why the uh, how the evaluation uh, how the term evaluation is treated in chess programming in general so it's he it is, he describes this as some sort of a uh, way to know regarding the advantage the material advantage or positional advantage of uh, between one side uh, uh, opposed to to another side in terms of uh, in the points of uh, chess material so well sorry for this it's just because i'm trying to translate word by word so the idea is very simple so evaluation simply lets lets you know what is white better or is white or is black better uh, or is black better and uh the points to the score the score itself uh is the matter of uh well, we calculate how better in pawns, like one pawn better, uh, one pawn better, two pawn better, two pawns better, like ten pawns better, etc. Let's say we lost a queen, then opponent is kind of ten pawns better. So that's how this the the score kind of works in uh, what the score represents. So the scores is uh, the score is in so-called sandy pawns. So I hope that's clear. Okay, and uh, okay, so. Uh, and just like within the Texel student method, so he said he says like we would be observing uh, the evaluation from the white perspective, so that's that's important. Uh, and now, yeah, this this is the sentence that actually helped me to um, realize the, the just essence of the entire stuff. So, uh, well, uh, if we translate word by, by word, it means like now we will uh, we'll go from the uh, material uh, representation to probability representation but uh, okay guys just hold on a sec I need to close the door because my wife is talking on the phone hold on a sec okay guys sorry my wife is probably gonna kill me for this never-ending talks in English which makes her really uh, really nervous but uh, I'll, I'll just try to end up quickly okay so I mean I'm sorry if I would be talking a little bit with uh, the loud of my voice uh, the volume of my voice would be a, a bit lower i'm sorry just don't really want to shout to distract her from, from her phone call which is way more important compared to this video uh, at least from her perspective obviously not from mine <laughs> okay so uh the idea is uh is what is what i was uh, explaining uh several times before we need to translate uh, we need to translate the number to probability. So, oh my God, where is that? So we need to translate this number to the prob to the winning or losing or drawing probability. So either zero, zero point five, or one. So literally what I was already mentioning. Uh, and here he explained this. So translating this, he called this uh, mathematical. Oh my God, uh, mathemat mathematical expectation result of the game 
into the probability yeah it's too it's it sounds weird so literally just trying to translate the score to the probability that's it uh, if I'm not mistaken in machine learning this is called as normalizing and that's why this uh, and that's where the sigmoid function actually comes really handy to uh, to convert the this kind of scalar value to the probability value sorry if i'm uh, saying something weird regarding the terms I'm, i really suck in math i'm sorry for that okay so uh uh the constant k uh that was mentioned by andrew, uh, andrew grant in this in his article here so it's literally kind of all the same that i was already saying but anyway uh but here, he, uh, at very least, here he explains what this k is. So instead of providing some complicated formulas, he just explains what the k is. So the k is the material advantage coefficient where everything gets clear. And this is the most, uh, th th that's, that's the good side of, of Russians that they can explain this, this words, using this word. So everything gets clear. So this means like, uh, the material advantage where we can say for sure that okay black is done it's over they lost so that way that 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 way they mean but now he uh he wants to, ex to explain himself a bit more a, a, a bit better so in this case so he was so vladimir was using the k the constant of k equal to 150 which is one point and a half and he says like for sure uh gets clear uh, is only in the statistical sense. So in the real in the real games of chess, uh, you can find numerous number of uh, counter examples where uh, uh, where the situation that leads to the winning. Uh, okay, hold on a sec. Uh, so so, so say like, like it's possible when you have, when you're done on material but still made in your opponent. So. Uh, this means like from the statistical perspective having a material advantage more like about uh, to predict that you're about to win while in the real chess you might not have greater material but still you can mate your opponent because you just find a, a mating sequence or, or uh, had a fortunate queen sack or something okay now let's move further on so in the original algorithm uh, instead of statistical analysis for uh, calculating R predicted uh, quiescent search uh, kind of product was used and that's that that's why that, that's what I was already explaining so he said he, he then he, he explains for Russians what the quiescent search what the quiescent search actually means so he explained this is the this is the alphabet of search uh, where we're uh, calculating on, only the first in sequences and checks probably and so on. So just just uh, a little bit of uh, description of what the quiescent search is. And here is the reason that I was already mentioned. Like why is this so important? Because the amount of time taken for the calculations is getting decreased in ten or 100 number of times so it's really really faster works really faster uh, that's the reason why it was decided to take uh, this faster schema and uh, just to drop uh, dynamic positions uh, on the stage of preparing the data so uh, compared to the original textual student method Vladimir's method actually uh, needs some additional preparation of the of the data set so he needs to get rid of those positions where quiz and search matters so instead he would just uh, be happy to extract only so-called compositions uh, it's arguable whether this is bad or not but he reports that it still uh, gives a very nice result in terms of plane strength and at the same time it's much faster compared to the to the original textual student method uh, if i'm not mistaken andrew grant was criticized criticizing this this method uh while i might be wrong so i don't really want to claim anything there's just some thoughts that probably maybe uh, some i'm not i'm not sure if, if that's true or not well anyway so uh now when we know uh our predicted for every given position and when we have the r uh, the by fact so it's been like mm, so when we have the predicted well so literally what i literally what i was explaining before so when we have when we've converted the 
uh, our evaluation to when we converted our evaluation to the probability, then we're comparing the actual outcome of the game with this uh, predicted result. And in that case, uh, okay, hold on a sec, I lost this already. Uh, so when we compare the predicted value with the by fact value, with the actual value of, of the game result, where they were encountered, where they were encountered, now we can calculate. Uh, uh, oh my god, how this called in English? Mean square error, I believe. Uh, sorry guys, I just... Uh, uh, th that's the only thing I want to Google Translate because this is the specific term uh, that needs to be translated. Yeah, mean square error prediction. <laughs> I told you, I told you. I, 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 I've, I've been encountering this mean square uh, error prediction term numerous times on talk chess, but uh, I, I wasn't really sure that in Russia it's called like this. So mean square. So now we can uh, calculate this mean square prediction error. So I hope that's clear. And here is the formula that Vladimir uh, actually uh, uh, as offers to use but it's not really that easy at the moment so uh, this mean square error evaluation already can be uh, observed as as the working example uh, that so so th this this is the error to minimize already so he says like this is already the error that you could you can start minimizing and this is the exact uh, this is the exact method uh, this is the exact approach uh, that is described in the original method. So as soon as we have this mean square error, we can already go for minimizing this error. And in order to do this, we just alter in our evaluation terms, make sure that they become better, call this evaluation again, and if we have a better result, we just save them, and that's it. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry, guys, just was a little bit... Distracted, okay. The, the mic seems to be just fine. Let me just make sure that uh, it still kind of works. Okay, I'm really sorry, just crazy, crazy stuff going on around. My wife has come back after not being for two days, and it's not really that easy to record a video, okay, when she's at home, but I have no choice. So, yeah, let's, let's go further on. So, uh, yeah, and this, uh, this mean square error is already can be used in order to actually get reduced. And that's the how uh, th that's actually what is what is done in the original method. So if we have a look at the original method method here. So again, yeah, like where's He would recompute an error using the original value of k. So that's it. Okay, so... Uh, but Vladimir actually offers to make another another modification here. So he says like... Uh, so we need to uh, take into account uh, the number of moves uh, left until the game ends so let's say we're kind of like dealing with a proper uh, with the current position well let's say with let's say we're dealing with this position in particular right so in order to make sure that we're calculating uh, that we're calculating this mean square error properly like more mm, precisely to make sure we're calculating that more precisely Another parameter to add into the formula that being described there is how many moves from this move and uh, so how many moves left from this position to the very last move of the game. So that's another kind of like extra parameter that Vladimir is using is in his in his formula. It's the formula would be updated here. So uh, this modification uh, and he says like mm, okay. Uh, so a few words regarding why this is needed. So uh, let's say there is some sort of a positional option 
uh, like uh, some position cons consideration on the chessboard in the beginning of the, uh, of the game. Uh, well, let's say like the fact that knight is on uh, let's say knight on e4 on e5. Yeah, and let's say well generally this position is good for white, right? Because the knight is standing in the center, but uh, this game can be won by black, and this doesn't really mean that uh, black uh, that actually white lost because of knight being placed on e5. On the country, that placing knight in the center is actually generally a good idea, and it can be bad in any case. So that's the reason why you use uh, that parameter of how many moves left to the end of the game. And here now he provides the example, like he tries to explain what I already did here. Well, that's because I was reading this article a couple of times before recording this video. So um, and now he explains. So let's say uh, in the opening, the white has. Uh, a gorgeous, a gorgeous knight uh, in the center of the board, just like we do here, oh, man. just like we do here, like very proud knight. Okay, and but at the same time, uh, white can lose in a deep end game, and this happens after the cone, the uh, after this uh, this knight, uh, after this knight has been exchanged a long, long time ago, and. Uh, actually, the last uh, the loss happened due to the fact of uh, opponent's rook infiltration into your own uh, uh, into your own camp. Basically, well, uh, it's bad. That shouldn't uh, shouldn't uh, translate this by word. I mean, like, so if rook infiltrates to the second rank, like say black rook infiltrates to the seventh rank in the deep end game, then it's all the pawn pawns and then can promote its own pawn and wins. So it's, it was the problem of allowing rook to go to the second rank and not the problem of knight standing on e on e5 in the opening. So that's what he's trying to explain in regards to the parameter, in regards to why the parameter of how many moves uh, remaining to the end of the game is used in the formula below. So uh, in this case, uh, uh, the matter of the knight in the center of the board should not... Uh, take uh, a very big penalty uh, compared to the option of the rook uh, was kind of was available was seen on the second rank because uh, that's not the fault of the knight he says here so that that wasn't the matter of the knight that's not the fault of the knight that's that was the matter of the rook being infiltrated so that's the idea how that's clear so that's like that extra parameter has been clear now and now uh, he says like, okay, so uh, now he wants to embed uh, this new parameter into the formula, okay, and for every position, uh, this, uh, now, now he describes how in particular this uh, looks like from the math perspective, which is complete rocket science to me, so he says like this extra parameter of how many moves, uh, so this n, this n st stands for a number of moves uh, to the from current position to the end of the game. So for every position, uh, this parameter uh, would be uh, would represent. Oh my God, uh, this spe specific uh, specific uh, term, specific math term. I need uh, I need to Google Translate this explicitly because again, like sorry guys. So this number of moves would uh, would represent the exponential decay factor with parameter lambda. Okay, so that's 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 what it means. Okay, so then he says like the physical sense of this parameter, uh, the number of moves uh, within uh, uh, okay, <laughs> so the. Okay, probably he explains. Hold on a sec. Does he explain the lambda parameter? Hold on a sec. Okay, yeah, yeah, exponential decay factor with yeah. So like when I read this in English, I start starting to understand what's going on under the hood. Okay, so now he describes uh, the lambda parameter. So what what does this lambda mean? So this lambda means so the physical sense of this lambda parameter is the number of moves that influence 
uh, the uh, that influence the positional some some sort of a positional option of feature. Uh, man, how to call it? How to say this? Okay, I, I just try to explain this with my with my own words. So, let's say we have uh, a positional option like uh, a knight in the center, right? And we have mm, uh, a limit. Let's say from move five, from move five to move ten, where the knight is in the center of the board, and this lambda parameter regards to the particular interval interval where uh, the matter of having a knight in the center is associated with. So uh, this this factor of knight of centralizing the knight is associated. Uh, with a particular uh, interval within the game, let's say from from move five to move ten, that's that's important to to understand here, and uh, this is needed in order to make sure that let's say the knight on uh, in the square, uh, the knight in the center, uh, would influence only uh, from the move five to move ten, and it's it's not gonna be influencing much. Uh, the overall result of the game. Let's say if uh, uh, the, 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 there is a deep end game and the game is lost. But again, the, the game is not lost because this knight was uh, in the center in the opening. So it's some sort of a mapping of the positional parameter to the particular place, uh, to the particular, to particular interval of the moves. I'm really sorry for this non-technical explanation, but I hope that makes sense. If not, well, I'm sorry. It's just, yeah, you just read this rocket science uh, <laughs> article by Andrew Grant, or just Google Translate this one. Okay, so, uh, and now he says, and again, like, uh, uh, and anyway, this lambda parameter is uh, a general... Uh, yeah, just better not not be translated. It's a bit unclear. Uh, I I can't get what he means in Russian. That that's why I don't I can't really translate this properly. Okay, so in the below example, this lambda parameter takes the value of several uh, decades of half moves or of plies, literally. So no, several decades several tens I don't know how to when we have like a few tens I don't know how to call it decades probably it's not an option well okay not that's not be learning English now okay so okay let's read further on so in the original description of textual student method uh, they got rid of the initial moves. Yeah, uh, g g g the, we needed to get rid of the moves uh, from the opening and also those that has the mating scores. And this is explained somewhere, somewhere here on Chess Program Wikipedia. Uh, extract all position from those games except position of the opening book and positions uh, where engine find a mate score. So we, we need to, in the original method, we need to get rid of the positions with uh, the positions from the opening book. But with this lambda parameter, uh, so involving this lambda, uh, like he called it forgetting factor, like uh, it allows us uh, not to involve the explicit limitation on the most from the opening book. So, uh, in order to explain this in a very simple, the most simple way possible, with this lambda parameter, we don't need to exclude moves from the opening. So, with this lambda parameter, we can just don't care about the moves of the opening. That's it. So, a very simple step. Because uh, their influence uh, is uh, miserably small. Okay. So here is the final. Uh, here is the final. Mm, look of uh, I'm not sure how this should be translated from the mass perspective okay functional 
plus two. Uh, well, probably if this is the some some mathematical term, well, maybe this is applicable here. Okay, and the the task of learning uh, the task of uh, of learning uh, of evaluation function learning is now the matter of minimization of this j. Uh, oh my god! In the space of values of of, of this vector. So yes. I have no idea why those guys that are good in math uh, kind of using so complicated terms to explain relatively simple things. So, yeah. Uh, well, literally, the the minimizing of this J is is the same like what we done with this error minimization, but it's it's no longer no longer called error because now it has this factor of uh, like this because how, how we call it forgetting factor well i'm not really sure why uh well probably there is a deep mathematical sense why he he not calling this error but it's literally the same error but just with adding of this uh extra extra lambda parameter to uh just make make it possible to still use the moves the moves from the opening book and they won't really influence the uh, the result that much okay uh, no, interesting. Yeah, why this method works? Uh, uh, the major, the major part of uh, positional options appearing within the positions in the massive number of games are getting neutralized due to. Uh, Oh my god, let me let me just see this word properly. Due to due to averaging, obviously due to averaging. Okay, okay. So keeping their values and getting greater weights and uh, only only those values getting greater weights that has influenced result the most okay so again like yeah instead of translating word by word by word so the i the it will summarize it will summarize the how this formula works so it emphasizes only those positional parameters and factors that uh, truly influence the result of the game so let's say that again like if we just come back to our example with the knight so no matter whether the knight was in the center, this knight was in the center, this knight could be in the center, but it doesn't really uh, mean much in terms of how the game has ended. And let's say that the positional factor that really influenced the result of the game was the connected pass pawn that was like queen and that, that's it. So this method, this, this formula in particular, it allows to say that exactly the matter of the pass points actually resulted the actual uh, winning or losing result in the game and not, not those knights being developed in the beginning of the game. So this is some sort of a, of a mathematical optimization of initial Texel student algorithms in both like from this uh, probability calculation perspective and from uh, performance perspective as well. Okay. Uh, so, uh, and as the result of the above statement, so the earlier our evaluation function would start recognizing this uh, result in influence and evaluation options and parameters and factors, uh, the better the prediction would be, uh, the, the better prediction, the, the more precise uh, our, uh, the more precise the predictions of our evaluation function would be well literally the more precise scores it would be given and uh, respectively the chess engine is uh, would start playing stronger and now he just uh, so th this is a regarding the method so it's uh, literally it th the rest of stuff uh, it just uh, provides the results of the test using this sort of a method so well I think you just you can just Google translate it. it it would be literally enough to to get the entire idea and here again like he just uh, he just lists 
those uh, evolution parameters he was tuning and sharing some insights like uh, some of those were uh, well tuned and some were surprisingly uh, some were having surprisingly uh, kind of twice bigger values compared they had so let's say uh just 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 uh, i read this already just, just want to highlight the very gist so let's say he had uh, a two loss score for isolated pawn and for a passed pawn but after after the tuning he had for about twice more isolated pawn uh penalty and for about twice more uh promoted pawn bonus okay and so all these results, results, nothing interesting. And here, uh, uh, very interesting part. So uh, by, by the time uh, when this article appeared, there was only version uh, from the year 215, but now we have the version from uh, the year to, uh, to uh, 2020, basically the, the, this year version. This year is uh, almost ended, but anyway. Uh, so, uh, and the newest version has a uh, really refactored code, uh, tuning code. Uh, and I, I was comparing the, the code, yeah, like this uh, 2015 version is not that great and readable compared to the current one. The current one is, 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 is the one that, I sh that I've shown you. I don't remember if I've shown you this already or not. So here is the entire code in C++, plus, in C++ that does this. Uni. There's not really too many code really and if this works I really hope to be smart enough one day to port this to JavaScript hopefully so anyone could make use of this evaluation tuning but this is the very long term goal not gonna be doing this like the nearest days at the very least so and here is a, a very exciting part so this uh, so he called this the self-learning feature uh, is incorporated into Greco chess engine as uh, within the console mode and he said like the author well Vladimir doesn't know any other engines uh, that has this sort of a feature well probably I don't know the engines any engine that supports this feature as well to be honest so then well this why you call this vector of 27 coefficients man why well, you just don't call it the list of evaluation parameters to tune? So it has uh, the list of parameters to tune in the files in the file called weights.txt, and I'll, I'll, I've already uh, I've already seen that. Uh, now the most dramatic question is: Can I use some 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 of my own, or I would need to rewrite the code for my engine completely? That's a little bit of yeah. That's a little bit of uh interesting hold on a sec so if it calls the evaluation well yeah that's that's a good question to be honest desktop uh i've added my, i've added greco to my didactic collection uh didactic uh, didactic engine collection uh, so here it has the file weights txt and here is the list or vector why you call this vector just a list okay so the list of parameters he's tuning and here already you see like in 2015 he had uh he only had parameters for only one phase of the game see like only one phase of the game but the 220 version already has uh for uh, the values for middle game and for the end game so he he started using interpolation as well which is uh, obviously makes results much better so and what I'm supposed to be doing I'm supposed to be uh, using material weights positional p square table weights and uh, game face margins as the input parameters to tune basically that's that's kind of it again like uh, I will first I will try to use the Greco engine itself to achieve this goal uh, I didn't yet dive uh, deep enough into the implementation of this uh, within this learn CPP to, to answer the question whether this is possible or not actually if it is possible I would definitely make a video on how to make it if it's not possible that uh, I will try my best to try to implement this in JavaScript on my own by trying to port Vladimir's code it's clean enough so I hope this should be fine and then uh, I will share the results basically so 
I really like this. So instead of quiescence using this uh, static evaluation, just I, I, I realize this, this should be really faster. Well, okay, guys. So let me just make sure that I didn't miss anything important. Yeah, I think. Yeah, here, here he just shows the output of his program. Okay. And he, he said that he was using the trading data from uh, not only from self play, but from some external pgns so it kind of also works as well uh again like yeah i really need to dive into the implementation if 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 he calls the evaluate function within within this learn cpp in this case uh i'm doomed and i won't be able to evaluate Not sure what this in it well means. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. Use evaluate position. Oh, this is unfortunate. Oh man, yeah. This means that this means that I wouldn't need to to write all of this stuff completely on my own a very very unfortunate thing but yeah well at very least a very clean code so uh, I think I could uh, I would be able to play around to debug these functions uh, I'm really interested if I can just compile this learner separate oh no i can't compile it separately because it relies on this evaluate function yeah this is a little bit weird but anyway anyway you know like the very cool thing guys that now i really feel that it's kind of on the tip of my hands uh of my fingers that i, I really can touch this taxels tuning like uh automated tuning stuff so yeah yeah unfortunately i won't be able to but hold on a sec maybe i could have used if i just try to rewrite if i try to use my own evaluate function if i incorporate my own evaluate function into gray coach s engine in that case yeah this is interesting So I just I'm just thinking how can I make uh, this code s serve my own purposes? That is interesting. So yeah, the idea yeah obviously so the weight is something that is used within the actual evaluate function that is called the, that is the, the the essence the the core of the engine. Yeah, obviously. So we call it and then we're using this weights okay okay yeah well, okay guys so really uh great territory for experimenting and i would be very happy to share some results uh on this sort of a stuff also i'm thinking about uh assuming the fact that my javascript chess engine has the api i think i can write a very simple script to run in Node.js to produce this game sets from self-play with a uh, like a hyperbolic time control like one second plus 0 0.01 second increment it's incredibly fast games so yeah uh, this might be very very interesting so yeah and, and the increment is just needed to in, in order to avoid losing on time basically so yeah this is very interesting thing to consider so yeah, so even if a noob like me finally feels like he's kind of like try this Texel tuning like stuff on his own, I think you guys kind of much smarter than I am, so you would be probably able to do exactly the same. Well, anyway, if I ever manage to make this on my own, in that case, I will be extremely happy to share my own implementation. Well, 100%, like 99%, uh, it would be based on this code uh, at, at very least regarding the math part 
you know, I see this stochastic yeah, gradient, gradient descent algorithm. Yeah, so I'm a code monkey king, so first code and then eventually try to understand what you've written. Okay, guys, so this is it from my side. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you've learned something interesting out of it. So see you probably uh, see you the next year already. I think I'm not going to be making uh, any videos in this year, but we'll see. Well, probably, probably not. Okay, so happy new year, guys, and until the next time, and take care.